I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now waiting, better believe in your mind Cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything Hey everybody, this is Praxis I like to say here on my channel that there's no one correct way of doing anything, and that's oftentimes very true. I think that different people's circumstances might uh, lend themselves to one approach, whereas someone else's circumstances might lend themselves to a different approach. Uh, but that said, there are ways of doing things that have more pros than there are cons, and one thing that I see here on YouTube that where people are very opinionated is the idea of creating compost. Uh, there are different ways of creating compost. Some have uh, certain pros, some have other cons, uh, and I want to share with you my uh, approach to composting because it has a pro that um, is really, I think, unexpected to most people. It's like kind of something like you buy this car and you get a free boat or something like that, you know, something you wouldn't really expect out of the deal. The way that I uh, approach composting uh, is very, very simple. You know, a lot of people will say you need these like uh, barrels and you kind of roll it and turn it and you gotta, you know, make sure you put, you know, this ratio and that ratio in it and uh, um, it's pretty labor intensive the way a lot of people describe it. Uh, it oftentimes requires buying a lot of products, so a lot of expense. Um, uh, there's a lot of brain work, uh, you know, where they're saying you have to have exactly this ratio of this or that. Um, my, my approach is really, really simple, and it has this added benefit that, uh, you know, people that use these devices, you know, they don't even get close to this uh, extra benefit. So what's my approach? Well, what I do is when I have uh, scraps in the kitchen, I take them from inside the house, I walk outside, and I put them on the ground. And that's the end of the process. Na Mother Nature takes over from there and she does all the rest of it. You know, I might occasionally uh, in the fall throw some like dried leaves on top or something like that, but you know, that's, that's pretty much it. I throw things on the ground in a pile, uh, Mother Nature breaks them down, and then whenever I need compost, I kind of lift the top off and kind of dig out what's underneath. It's always full of really dark, uh, uh, I never know how to pronounce humus, hummus, I don't know, uh, you know, that dark earth, uh, there's uh, worms all throughout it, it works really, really well. The fact that it's on the ground means that it never, uh, it never develops too much moisture in it. That's one issue you get, have with these bins, is, you know, if you don't have the right moisture balance, uh, you can have uh, fluid in the bottom, and then it can go anaerobic, and then it can start stinking. You throw stuff on the ground, any extra fluid just goes down into the ground. In terms of uh, microorganisms, worms, and all the other types of bugs that go in there to break the compost down, they're already there in the soil so they come right up to do the work so you don't have to introduce anything. It's a really simple uh, approach to doing composting but it also has this added benefit. Before I share that with you though, the one thing that everyone always tells me that I'm, I'm crazy when I do my composting this way is uh, yeah but it's going to attract animals. It's going to attract you know, you know rats and pests and things like that. Not really. I mean, you know, I live in the woods, there's chipmunks, there's mice, there's things like that. Yeah, they go into the compost, but it's not like suddenly there's like, you know, a, a massive influx in the population of anything. I mean, you know, we live in the world, there are animals. Yeah, they, occasionally the animals uh, will visit that, there. We have black bear in the area. I've never seen any evidence that the black bear uh, get into there. We have, uh, you know, coyotes and raccoons. I, you know, it's not really, it's not really a thing. You know, I'm sure they go there occasionally, uh, but most of the time what I'll see is, you know, some crows will come by and the crows will kind of peck at it. But honestly, they're, they're dropping in there. They're leaving their droppings. You know, it's kind of uh, beneficial in that respect. So yeah, okay, you can complain about like, you know, there might be some cute animals that go to it and what a horror show that would be is if you have like a family of baby raccoons that shows up at your, uh, your compost pile, you can make that a big deal out of that. Or you can just be like, okay, so some raccoons may show up, who cares? But it's got this extra benefit, and I'm going to share it with you right now. But first, we're going to see uh, my squash that are growing in the garden. And I promise you, this is uh, uh, integral, or integral, to uh, my point about compost making. So let's check out my squash. So here is my row of butternut squash. That's what we've got growing in here. Uh, I think I've got five, maybe six plants planted in here. You can see we got some uh, flowers going in here. This is a male flower. We've got a a bee working on it in there. I mean, I could get all, get my panties all up in a bunch about like, oh, you have a garden that attracts bees. Okay, you know, whatever. Uh, this is a male flower. You see at the bottom, there's no, uh, there's no lump or anything. We do have some female flowers over here. And let's see if we can find one. One of the more developed ones. Okay, yeah, I think this is probably the most developed one that we have right here. Yeah, you know, it's off to a good start right there. You can see, uh, the kind of lump at the bottom of that flower there. So this is uh, this is going to be a butternut squash. You got one other right over here that I just noticed. 
know, it's just, it's the beginning of the garden. It's uh, kind of early in the season and we're just, just starting to get some results. So, you know, so far so good with that, you know, uh, going, going pretty well. But let's see what's going on over in the compost. What am I talking about here? Why are we going to the compost? What's that have to do with it? Well, we have some squash that was growing out of the compost also. And this is something I didn't uh, plant per se. Of course, I, I put like old squash seeds in here and, uh, and it just kind of grew of its own accord. So here's a big, a big squash plant. Actually, there's a couple squash plants in there. And this started um, just about the same time as all the other plants that I planted in the garden. If anything, it was probably a little behind because uh, the plants that you just saw over in my garden, those were planted during uh, the early, early spring when nothing was growing out here. So what we have growing in the compost, if anything, started later. So uh, you, you can tell what I'm building up to here. Let's look inside and see what kind of squash we have growing right out of the compost. Let's see. Here's one wheat spaghetti squash, and this was apparently growing from a seed that got thrown out from a spaghetti squash. There's one. Let's see what else we have over here. Three. There's three more spaghetti squash right in there. Let's keep going down the vine. Look at the size of these things. I'm just going to put my hand in here for comparison. They're getting pretty big. I'm going to continue coming down the line here, see what else we can find. Oh, we got a uh, butternut squash right there. A butternut squash right here. These are pretty big. Coming down along the vine here. No more big butternut squash, but what do we got right here? Another, if I can get in here. Another spaghetti squash, and it almost doesn't even bear mentioning, but th there's another uh, beginning of a spaghetti squash here, and that's as big or bigger than some of the ones in the garden. And, uh, you know, it, it almost barely bears mentioning here because this plant is doing really, really great. Plants that grow out of your compost just naturally, in my experience, uh, every single year that I've ever uh, you know, grown a garden, the things that grow wild, sort of, so to speak, out of my compost are always amazingly successful plants. Uh, the, the reasons for that are pretty obvious. They're growing right out of compost. Uh, and what's great about it is it didn't take me any effort at all to plant any of that stuff. Uh, oftentimes I'll have tomatoes growing out of there, squash growing out of there, and it's a huge harvest that I didn't put any effort into whatsoever. We also got some rhubarb right back here. I did plant the rhubarb, but you can see being next to the compost, you know how huge these leaves are. I'll just give you a, I mean rhubarb tends to have big leaves anyway, but this is, these are particularly big rhubarb leaves here. Incidentally, I'm not a big fan of rhubarb. I don't really know what to do with it. I know you can tell me I can make uh, strawberry rhubarb pie with it, but uh, you know that only goes so far. <laughs> In an emergency situation, it would, uh, you know, be a nice source of vegetables and vitamin C and everything. And I grow it there because, you know, it doesn't take any work, but, uh, yeah, it's not my favorite thing. But squash is going to be a really nice treat, and the squash that grow out of my compost didn't take any effort whatsoever. So that's an additional benefit of just throwing your, your scraps on the ground. You can see this is right next to our front door, so in the wintertime, I just have to step out under this covered area and I just fling the stuff over into the compost and don't have to get my feet all covered in snow or anything like that. You know, absolutely no effort. Just toss the stuff outside. You know, no turning, no flipping, no measuring, no thinking. And Mother Nature takes care of the rest. So, so much in our society, people are always trying to, you know, come up with, uh, you know, a system for something or a gimmick or a device. You know, you gotta buy this product if you wanna, you know, do X, Y, or Z. You know, Mother Nature really has your back. I, you know, sometimes Mother Nature has your throat. You know, that, 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 that is certainly the other side to Mother Nature. But if you, if you work in accord with her, if you, if you work in harmony with her, you know, a lot of the grunt work that you, a lot of people get tricked into doing, a lot of the products that people get tricked into buying, you know, Mother Nature is sitting there offering to do, do that stuff completely for free for you. So if you're thinking about composting and you're worried about like all these videos, they say like, oh, if you, you know, you gotta buy this and you gotta buy that and it's gonna be so expensive to do composting and if you, if you bring the stuff outside, you're gonna have like bears and pterodactyls visiting your house and you, you know, your children are gonna get carried away and killed. Um, I'm not gonna say the chances of that happening are zero, but it's never happened to me. That's it, I hope you found this helpful and thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.
And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.